Just staying in business is a battle for some clubs in the Ensley League. Exeter City are involved in the biggest fight at the moment. £1.2 million in debt, it's almost certain that they're going to have to sell their St James's Park ground to survive. And right now, instead of a new ground, developing a nearby athletic stadium seems to be their only hope. I don't think we've got a cat and else chance of building a stadium because we've got no money. You know, it looks as though if we sell this ground, then it's, that's got to go on towards sort of uh, reducing the debts that we've got. Uh, but if the Football Trust and the Council and the brewery can get together, then I think we can, uh, we can start off probably with a, a few hundred thousand in the bank, but then it's, it's imperative that whoever's running the club or whoever's the manager, that they work budgets out and you cut your co cloth accordingly. And if you do that, then this club will survive for a long time and they can be very successful in their own way. The players have still managed to retain their sense of humour. While the administrators have been working on keeping the wolf from the door, the first team have been performing in the Christmas panto, Little Red Riding Hood. We try to uh, tell them that they're the safest people at the club because they're on contract and the Football League and the PFA will look after them. Um, it's imperative that we all stick together. You know, the supporters, the players, the directors. Um, and we make sure that this club survives to be playing football in the future. It's as simple as that, but it is, it's desperate. But the Dunkirk spirit was outshone by another panto performance early on Saturday. Goalkeeper Andy Woodman and defender Robbie Turner managed to give Stuart Young Scarborough's opening goal. From the ridiculous to the sublime, Exeter's players picked themselves up and produced some high quality form. Mike Chechere was behind most of it, his header leveled things up and Chechere's pace was the reason Scarborough was soon reduced to 10 men. Off went Jason Rocket for the professional foul. He denied a clear goal scoring chance according to the referee but even from that range Scarborough weren't safe. Mark Gavin's superb free kick puts Exeter in front. And for once, Terry Cooper was able to sit back and enjoy a Saturday afternoon. At least you can't see Exeter slipping too close to the bottom of Division 3, not while Chichere's class illuminates their front line. Scarborough were well beaten and on the way to filling that basement position when Martin Phillips, once rated a £10 million prospect by Alan Ball and likely to go to raise more money soon, knocked in the fourth. The fifth soon after was reward for Stuart Storer's outstanding form on the right wing. There was still time for City's Woodman and Scarborough's Young to be sent off and for City's reserve keeper Valletta to perform his own comedy number, David Doria scored. If they're to play the return, Exeter have got until December the 14th to guarantee they can clear their debts. If the club can get planning permission uh, for development on St James's um, and we can probably get 5,000 seats down at the arena, I think that would, would do to start. And I think if all parties could get together and, uh, and really mean it, I don't think there's any reason why we shouldn't be playing at the arena for the start of next season.